So I want us to pray this morning. This is a missions conference. Discipleship and missions conference. The discipleship part is the part that addresses our work with God. Our relationship with Him. How we respond to Him in the things He speaks to our lives. How we are growing to be more like Jesus in our everyday work. And the Lord has addressed issues on that front. He keeps addressing them. You can't go to the house of God, to any Christian conference, that God will not address the issue of your being. Because we are human beings. We are not human doings. So God must first address the being. But for many of us, we get stuck on the being. Can I? I have bad news for you, and it's also good news. You can never know God enough. And you can never please God enough on this side of eternity. But the Bible says, if you say you have no sin, you deceive yourself. That in itself is sin. Deceive. You can never be all together like Jesus on this side of eternity. No way. So when we see him, that's when we will be like him. So the important thing is to grow, walk with God, and work for God as we grow. This morning again, the Lord will challenge us in that regard. May I plead with us that you give God your heart, not your head. Many of us have heads full of Bible information. Heads full of correct doctrine. We know all the good preachers. We can quote their messages and even speak the way they speak. But that doesn't equate to anything tangible. If you will not obey God. To obey is better than sacrifice. And many of us have made tremendous sacrifices in this meeting. You slept in the open. I mean, I think that is your fourth test of mission life. And you have not complained. The Lord bless you. But you see, that sacrifice without obedience amounts to nothing. This morning, as we come to the last day of 2019, and you are at the brink of 2020, Never mind that the church has made an idol of 31st December. Everybody is crossing over to take over. They took over last year. They took over the year before they are still taking over. Yet nothing has been taken. But that's not what we are talking about. We are talking about 2020 begins a new decade. 2020 is a leap year that God will place your feet on higher ground. On the matter of growing in Christ, on the matter of obeying Jesus. Make that your prayer this morning. And pray for me that I will deliver what God wants me to deliver. See, the problem we preachers have is that we have a lot to say. But this morning, that God will help me to say what he wants me to say. In the way he wants me to say it. And that the power thereof shall be of his spirit. Hide me behind the cross. That it will be Jesus they see. It will be Jesus they hear. Say those whom you send speak your word. That I will speak his word. And you give them your spirit without measure. That the spirit will be without measure. In Jesus name we pray. Hallelujah. Please be seated. We've been dealing with. The urgency. Of the king's message. And this morning. I'm supposed to speak on the messenger. And his response. Hallelujah. 
the messenger and his response to the urgency of the message. We'll be looking at a few scriptures from Exodus chapter 3 and chapter 4. You know the story, so I'm not going to read all the story. I'll bring out highlights. We'll also look at Matthew 4, verse 8, 18 to 22. I will read that one first. Then we'll look at Exodus later. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 4. Again, you know the story. Jesus had just been baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then he was taken to the wilderness to be tried of the enemy. Uh, we don't have time to talk about that. But just to say that the next phase after you've been anointed is a wilderness experience that tests whether that anointing will matter for God or matter for you. And for many of us, we fail there. One thing about the devil that scares me, that the devil can exploit even your love for God. He can exploit any and everything that is important to you. Even your devotion to God. Do you remember? Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And after that he was hungry. Was he not? So when you are hungry, what do you need? So what did he tempt Jesus with? Turn stones to bread. Not money, bread. That was a need. So Any time you face temptation, don't quarrel with the devil. Question your need at that time. And then Jesus said, no man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen? So what did the devil pick from there? Jesus loved the word of God. Is that not so? so? What did he bring next? God's word says, jump from this place and we'll deliver you. Oh. And what did Jesus say? No, no, no. You know, the devil, if you read that scripture in the Psalms, the Bible says, he will guide you in the way you should go. And you shall not dash your feet against a stone. So the question is, was it God guiding Jesus at that time? Eh? So that scripture was not going to work if God was not the one guiding. Many of us read scriptures and we jump on them. You forget that for every promise of God, times and conditions apply. So when you don't apply the terms and conditions, you will not get the promise. So Jesus refused to obey that adulterated word of God. And then the next thing was, you know, he took him to the pinnacle and showed him the kingdoms of the world, right? Now what did Jesus come to do? What was his mission? To turn the kingdoms of this world over to his father. Was it not why he came? That was his vision. That was his mission. But even that the devil was going to exploit. How was he going to exploit it? Change the terms on which that was going to happen. Reduce the cost of obedience. The plan of God was that Jesus would die on the cross. That like Revelation 5.9. You were, you, were, you were slain and with your blood you purchased men from every tribe, every tongue. But the devil said, no, you don't need to be slain. Just bow down and worship me. I will give you. Somebody said, well, that was not a temptation because Jesus already owned the world. No, if you already own the world, that won't be a temptation. The devil can't tempt me and say, Brother Sam, bow down, I will give you this phone. It's mine already. Why would that be a temptation? The truth was that at that time, the word was in the hand of the devil. We are told exactly when the word became Jesus. When he died and rose up. That's the only time he said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. 
So even your vision for God can be exploited by the devil. And one way he does that is obey God but on your own terms. Not on God's terms. How many times do I hear young men come up to me and say, ah, Brother Sai, you know, God is calling me to be a missionary, but my own is to support mission. So I'm trusting God to make me a millionaire. So I ask them, what are you now? A hundred near? How much of the hundreds have gone into vision? If you can't give God one naira out of ten, you will not give one million out of a hundred million. Giving is a spirit. Not giving is also a spirit. That's why we have more mission support groups in our time than mission agencies. So there are a lot of missionary middlemen. You want to support Capro, they say, no, come and give us the 100 naira. We will spend 20 naira to go to Jaws and deliver 80 naira to Capro. That is a waste. May the Lord give us understanding. So even your vision and calling can be exploited. I remember when God called me into ministry. And he was specifically saying, go and join Capro. I had known Capro for three years. I was a partner with Capro, supporting Capro. And I knew a little bit about some of the inside workings of Capro. And that was the last place I wanted to go. But you know, you don't go where you want. You go where God says go. If I even the wife I married, that's not the wife I wanted. But with God, it is not what you like or what you want. It is point and kill. What do they call it? God points at it, you kill it. Praise the Lord. That's what it takes. So I came across another ministry, an American-based ministry. I said, oh, come and work for us. We'll send you for training in America. You'll be our East African representative. And your salary will be $400 a month. It's a car. If you need to travel, there will be tickets. That looked exciting. I was not going to go to Ganarop. I was going to go to Texas and train. If you go to Ganarov, it's a quarry site. That looked more like it for me. It would be more prestigious to work for an American organization than this one that nobody knows the name. I wanted to obey God, but on my own terms. Many of us said, Lord, let me first marry. Let me first do this. Okay, Lord, I will serve you, but this is where I want to serve you. That is serving God in an advisory capacity. That is not obedience. You're a special advisor, right? So, the devil tried to exploit that, but thank God Jesus escaped. Amen? We learned last night as the Lord was speaking to us too, about some of the conspiracies, going but not really going. So Jesus now, finally, there was a vacancy because John the Baptist was arrested. So Jesus immediately stepped in. Immediately stepped in. Can I say to you up front, that if you are going to be a messenger with the right response, Whenever God shows you a need, that is a call. What did I just say now? What did I just say now? Whenever God shows you a situation that is a need and that it burdens you, that is a call. You don't need to see a dream. You don't need to see a vision. I don't know how many of you have ever woken up and said, I have a call to go to the toilet. The Lord appeared to me and pointed to the toilet and said, it is time. Once your body expresses a need, what do you do? That is a picture of your spirit. Once your spirit begins to express a need, the Bible says he works in us to will and to do what? To do. So God showed you a brother who came to this conference and the sleepers is torn. 
And it concerns you. How can a brother have a torn slipper? Now, immediately God will also show you three pairs of shoes you left in your own wardrobe. And he will allow you to make the connection. May the Lord give you understanding. But God does not lead us as computers. He allows our will to come to play. That is the difference between us and animals. So Jesus obeyed. I'm coming to where we want to read. So in verse 18, he began to go. And the Bible says, while walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers. Simon, called Peter, Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were what? What were they? You see, the messengers that God will call are never idle people. They are busy at something. The only disciple of Jesus we can't trace his CV was Judas. I think it was an area boy that Jesus wanted to rehabilitate. You can't trace the CV of Judas. Maybe that's why he didn't make it. Any missionary or pastor you can't trace his or her CV. Watch it, you mess up. I meet a lot of missionaries. So what are you doing for the Lord? Missionary work. Missionary work cannot be a work. Missionary work is a platform. What is the work? So if you only just missionary work, sorry for you. You either evangelizing and planting churches, discipling and pastoring new converts, mobilizing the church, supporting ministries in admin and finance, Transforming communities through your skills and work. That is the work. Missionary work is no work. What are you doing in ABU? I'm a student. Doing what? Studying what? I'm just a student. Which department? ABU. You'll be suspicious. So, what are you doing in missionary work? Where? Capro. What work? Capro work. Suspicious. Don't support such a person. Amen? Don't even pray for him. So, they were fishers of men. They were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you what? Fishers of men. Jesus only increased what they were doing. They were fishermen. He put off in between. Have you noticed that? He just interrupted that career and inserted his own side to it. You are a fisherman, that's great. But I will make you what? Fisher of. Jesus only directed that skill. I am an IT specialist. I will make you IT of. I'm a doctor. I will make you doctor of. Hallelujah. I'm an engineer. I'll make you an engineer of. I'm a teacher. I'll make you a teacher of. That's all he does. I'm doing nothing. You will do nothing of nothing. One dangerous thing about the Holy Spirit, he multiplies whatever is there. If you're an angry person before you got baptized, you'll be angry twice. That's why he takes his time to deal with that anger first. May the Lord give you understanding. Some people got saved and they were still stealing. That's why Paul said, let them who used to steal. Do what? No more. But the tendency is you can continue. Whereas you were stealing yam, you cannot be stealing phones and Bibles in church. Or stealing sermons from other preachers. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat. 
with Zebedee their father, mending their net, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father. <laughs> it's not only marriage that Jesus demands you leave your father. <laughs> he said, he who loves, he who comes to me and does not love me above father, mother, brother, sister, cannot be. So that is how these disciples responded. We'll come to that later. We've been dealing with who is this king? What is the message? Why the urgency? And this morning we'll look at how far have we gone? And why haven't we gone as far? Who is this king? He's the ruler of the earth. Hallelujah. I'm just summarizing the last three days so we can get somewhere. Isaiah 9, he said, the government shall be upon his shoulder. Which government? Which government? Local government? State government? Federal government? Which government? First, the government of your life. But can I say Every other government. Jesus came to take over kingdoms. Jesus wants to be the governor of Benue State. He wants to be the Totif and the Ochi Idoma and the Emir of Life here. He wants to be the president of Nigeria and the chairman of African Union and ECOWAS. He wants to be the UN Secretary General. But he does that through his people. Hallelujah. Just like the devil does it through people. God by his redemptive plan has ordained that he will do nothing on earth except through his people. So if God wanted to be governor of being a state, he would pick one of his children, circumcise his heart not to love power and money, Make him completely selfless and put him in that place. Not to make Benue a Christian state. You can never make a state Christian. Oh, when I see governors say I'm dedicating my state to God, I pity them. Because even within that cabinet, some people will not dedicate it. God did not set out to save states, He set out to save individuals. If you will ever make an impact for God in this state as a Christian, it's because your life will be a witness. Hallelujah! And men will behold your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. That's the only way you can affect. If you are the VC of this country, of this country, and you are a Christian, you cannot come and say, in the name of Jesus, I declare every student believer. It doesn't work. Chiluba did it. That's my problem. When you say, oh, the Muslims are killing Christians, what we mean is that they are attacking Benue villages. They attacked my village. I've been preaching there for 28 years. Less than 2% are Christian. I'm not an ecumenical Christian. I'm a Bible-believing Christian. You don't have Christian by geography. You have Christian by personal commitment. Oh, they are attacking Christians in southern Kaduna. Is everybody in southern Kaduna a Christian? That is a mistake we are making. And we are redefining Christianity. And that is affecting our commitment to great. If everybody in the Middle Bay is Christian, why should I? May the Lord give us understanding. A Christian is not a place. A Christian is a person. There is no cultural Christianity. There is personal commitment to Jesus. May the Lord give us understanding. He is the governor over the nation. Revelation 1, 5, 6. All oh, that Nigerian Christians would believe that over Buhari is governor Jesus. The heart of the king is in whose hand? You, you read it, but you don't believe it. You believe that the heart of Buhari is in the hand of the Kaaba. The heart of Buhari is in the hand of the Imams. 
That's what you really believe. If the heart of a king is in God's hand, who do you think has the greatest potential? That king. Those who touch God's hand. Hallelujah. For the kingdom is whose? Who owns the Nigerian kingdom? You don't believe it. One of the biggest challenges God has is believers who don't believe. You read it, but you don't believe it. In practical life, you don't believe it. He's governor. Who is the governor? Who is the owner of the, the Benue kingdom? Who is the governor and the owner of Saudi Arabia kingdom? Sokoto Caliphate. Kanem Bruno Empire. You don't believe it. He is the Lord of the harvest. Hallelujah. Any harvest that we are trying to harvest, who is Lord over it? It's not the Imams or Mieti Allah or Gurus. Any harvest is owned by the Lord. He is the Lord of what? You know, that's one thing that confuses me about God. When I meet him face to face, I will ask him some questions. He is the Lord of the harvest, isn't it? Where do you get the workers to do the harvest? Where do God, where are the workers to do the harvest? In the church or in the bar? Who is the head of the church? So God is the head of the church where the harvesters are. He is the Lord of the harvest where the need is. So you own the laborers, you own the farm. So why are you asking me to pray the Lord of the harvest to send laborers? Why? The harvest, the farm is yours. The laborers are yours. Why not just push them? But you see, God has ordained that on this earth you will do nothing except in answer to prayer. Just know that. So each time God gives a prayer burden, it's because he wants to do something. Hallelujah. He's just looking for someone. Look at, God was looking at a nation. He didn't want to destroy them. He said, I sought for a man to stand in the gap so I will not destroy them. Excuse me, God, you are the one angry with them. You are also the one who does not want to destroy them. So why not just quench the anger? No, he must find somebody to pray him to quench his own anger. That's why when we say prayer is the work, that's what we're talking about. Prayer is not a shopping list to collect gifts at Christmas. Prayer is the only instrument God has to do anything he wants to do on earth. That's why prayerlessness is a sin, not a weakness. Each time God prompts you to pray, brother, sister, it's because he wants to do something. When you refuse to pray, you are preventing God from doing that thing. That's why the first call Jesus gave was, the harvest is plenty, the laborers are what? Few. Pray ye. Before he said, go ye, he said, pray ye. And that's exactly what we are not doing. He is the Lord of the heaven. He is also the head of the church. Hallelujah. That is a king we are talking about. Never mind that today we have stayed a coup against God in his church. Men have taken over his church. The men of God are stronger than the God of the men. So we go to San Kutu's church. Brother Tade's church. But my son asked me a question one day. I couldn't answer. We came into Lagos from South Africa. We're driving around. And we saw big b balls of men of God. So he asked me, Daddy, who owns the church? I say it's Jesus. I say, why are they not putting Jesus' picture there? I say, son, they have seized that church by a coup d'etat. And many of us truly believe that our father in the Lord is the bishop. 
And Jesus said, do not call any man. Did you read that in your own Bible? That's why anybody that calls me daddy, I knock you on the head. Don't put me in trouble with you. I'm not your daddy. I know whose daddy I am. I'm your brother. I'm not even your uncle. I'm your brother. Don't call me uncle. I'm not that old. (laughs) Hallelujah. And I went to a leader of a church to challenge him to get involved in mission. No one told me my church has its own mission. Our mission is to make millionaires and leaders. I say you are correct. It's truly your church. Because if it's the church of Jesus, he didn't say go into all the world and make millionaires. What did he say we should go and make? He didn't say go into all the world and make leaders. Who did he say we should make? Leaders are bosses. Disciples are followers. A Christian leads by following. May the Lord give you understanding. We lead from behind. Behind Jesus. So men have usurped church. They think they can spend the church money the way they want. I know a church in Lagos that spends over 300 million a year on advertisement. They have never given 3 million to missions. I know because the pastor who used to be the accountant had to leave in anger. But if they knew it was God's money, they won't spend it like that. That is, there is something in civil service called misappropriation. It is not that you stole the money. They say, use this money to build school. You use it to build hospital. Did you not do good? But what do they call it? He is the head of the church. We respect the people that God has put in charge. Now some of them even say, I'm the angel of the church. When Jesus has made you higher than angels, angels are your ministering spirits. How did you demote yourself to become angel? And to qualify to be heads of churches, we pay one million to other men to make us bishops. 500,000 to make us reverend doctors. A doctor that has not written three pages of Bible study at night is a fraud. If you want to be a doctor, go to school. The devil does not respect titles. Jesus never said, except you come in the name of Reverend Doctor, the devil will not bow. But to show our inferiority complex, we take titles to justify what we're doing. So, if you wanted to buy a jeep, to buy a jeep, you have to be a bishop. So, the moment you become bishop, the condition they give you, your church must sit at least 2,000 people, right? So, you start harassing your member to build a 2,000 seater cathedral. When all your 10 years, you have not sat 120. Then you must not live in a rented accommodation. Those are the conditions for bishops. So you start pressing your people to build you a house. When the house of God is in ruin. Then a bishop must not ride a car. It must be an SUV. If you are at bishop, you aim for a private jet. And men are gullible enough to do it for you. But the devil is not impressed. The Chinese have a saying. If only the monkey has sat down, nobody will know that it doesn't have hair in the buttocks. It's when the monkey started climbing a tree that suddenly his nakedness showed. You didn't cover yourself properly. You are climbing. Very soon your nakedness will show. So when you hear the prophet... Slaughter the university student. Butchered her and removed the heart. And cooked for a child and a mother to eat for money. No, it's a naked person. 
the Lord will grant us to return his church to him in Jesus' name. Because we have handed over his church to men, they have abused it, bastardized it, and misusing it. The king, when Jesus wore a crown of thorns on his head, it was a reminder to us that he's king of kings and lord of lords. Hallelujah. What is the message? His love and desire for all men to be saved. God loves men. You know, on Christmas Day, the Pope made a statement that everybody hashtagged around the world. That God loves all of us, even the worst of us. As if he was the first person to say it. Over 2,000 years before this Pope said it, Jesus said, I came for to seek and save who? The lost. I did not come for those who are well. Who did I come for? So why do the statement of men become the hashtag? Eh? Jesus said, if you have faith, even as a master seed, you can say to this mountain, be what? You didn't hashtag it until your bishop say, your faith can move all your mountain. Amen. Then you hashtag it. May God deliver us from the worship of men. The message is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul explained that gospel in 1 Corinthians 15. It's about Jesus. Your church is not the gospel. Your bishop or man of God cannot be the gospel. They are fallible men. Your best hero of faith has feet of clay. That's why those who backslide quickest are those who are closest to men of God. When they start seeing them misbehave, oh, my heart bleeds. But one so-called woman of God, if I call her name, you know, some of you live in Abuja. She had a following of over 2 million online. She died recently. But she died a drunkard. She died a promiscuous woman sleeping with every and every man of God she could find. And the person who disciples her is somebody I disciple. So I'm a spiritual grandfather. That's what I mean. And the person came to me when they asked her to come and take over the ministry. Now that that's she came to me and said, so what's wrong with your taking over? Then she began to tell me all that happened. Show me SS, MS, SS, SMS messages. When this woman of God died, her phone was full of pornographic videos that other men of God were sending to her. They had to quickly wipe off the phone to save face. But she had over 2 million followers all over the world. And some of those men of God, if I call their name, you will shrink. On her deathbed, she had to call this my friend and say, look, I have messed up. Pray for God to have mercy on me. But she was preaching. I had a following. Left over 19 million naira in an account in Nigeria. Left over 1.2 million dollars in an account in the U.S. Because people were giving online. So no man of God is good news. I am not good news. Only Jesus is good news. If you think your man of God is good news, come to me. I will tell you the dark side of him you don't know. I'm not saying everybody is bad. The Bible said, the treasure of God's unction is in vessels of what? <laughs> so that the excellency of the power will not be me. When Peter and John hear that man, they say, why are you looking at us as if by our own holiness we've done this? It's the name of Jesus. No other name 
has been given above all names. Only the name of Jesus. All of us are work in progress. Every man of God, as you are going near them, we are a helmet. Safety first. May the Lord help us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. That's the gospel. The only hope humanity has for glory is Christ in them. Any man who does not have Christ is destined for shame sooner or later. Life with Christ is an endless hope. Life without Christ is a hopeless end. So we preach Christ and him crucified. Yesterday, our brother shared with us at night how the devil cleverly substitutes the message. Oh, I wish I can show you some project. Yesterday, I took a walk, a very long walk. I walked from New Jerry through the new bridge, went to do prayer work in North Bank. In those Muslim enclaves, then walk through the old bridge. And I saw things on the road. I captured a lot of them on my camera. One of them was a message. I'll read it. In this Makot. Tell you the kind of gospels going on. Amen. It says sacred mystic powers. You can see it. I snapped it. Sacred, come here for all that you need. Business success, marriage, love and attraction, do as I say, commanding power, membership, how to be a court member without being caught, riches, good luck, protection, even again men of God. <laughs> That's a message. And a phone number was left there. So I tried that phone number. And I called the number. And the person answered. Speaking like an Indian. But you know it's a Nigerian. So I said, said, so what do you want? I said, three things. I want Buhari's position. And the devil has been harassing me. I want protection from the devil. He said, that is an easy one. That I should come and meet him on January 3. And I should come at 11 p.m. And that when I'm coming, I should wear black. And uh, I should bring 100 Naira coins. Eh? Coins. And that then... That is for consultation. Then the other things we will discuss when I come. I said to him, so where should I come? He said, I should come towards that fish market in that fish market by the river, right? When I get to that place, I should call. Somebody will come and meet me. I said to him, can I come along with Jesus? He banged the phone. <laughs> he banged the phone. I tried calling back. Nobody picked. But there are people, I'm sure, who are going there. And some of them are professors in this university. Christ! Your hope of glory. We also talk about his wrath and judgment. Second Timothy 4.1 talk about knowing the wrath of God. We persuade men. Hallelujah. God is not just love. He's also judgment. And a gospel message that only talks about love is half. The Bible said, 
to all who received him, he gave them the power to become what? Sons of God. Those who believe in him are not condemned. Those who do not believe, what did the Bible say? They are condemned already. And the judgment is already written. This is the judgment. Life ca- light came into the world, but men preferred what? Darkness. Why? Because their deeds are evil. The Bible wrote the judgment. You know, in Nigeria, they pass judgment and say, we'll explain it three years later. And between those three years, if you take money, they will change the explanation. God has explained his judgment ahead of time. So it's transparent. Nobody's going to go to hell for drinking. Nobody's going to go to hell for womanizing. Everybody's going to go to hell for rejecting the light of God in Christ. May the Lord give us understanding. So the, that is that. That is the message. If the message you preach isn't good news for every person from every tribe and tongue and nation, it isn't the real gospel. Hallelujah. That's what one pastor, Nathan Finn, said. The greatest message of all time is what? The gospel is the most fundamental human right of every man. So if you care about human right, the first right, every man really needs the right to the gospel. That's why the church is guilty of human right abuse. We have denied men the most essential right, the right to know God. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So who are his messengers? We look at the king. We look at the message. I'm just summarizing because God has helped us over these three days to hear more deep things. I'm just summarizing. His first messenger, you'll be surprised, is his creation and nature. Psalm 19 says, the firmament declare the glory of the Lord. Day after day, they speak wisdom. They do not utter a voice, yet there is no land where their voice is not heard. The Bible says, even if you never heard the gospel, all that can be known of God can be seen in his creation. Hallelujah. So the creation witnesses to God. Unfortunately, many cannot see the glory of God in creation. The Bible says they worship the creation more than the creature. They look at the sea, the beautiful Rome sea, and they say, what a beautiful work of nature. They don't see God in it. They look at you wonderfully and fearfully made. Say you came from apes. When the Bible says God made us in his image after they say no, you came from amoeba then you became a chicken, from chicken you became a goat, from goat you became a chimpanzee then from chimpanzee you became a man may the Lord deliver them foolish people I used to have a lecturer you know, in the university he was a lecturer in charge of evolution and he really looked like an evolved species. <laughs> so I, I used to say to him, you are the best specimen for what you are teaching. <laughs> he was an Egyptian. So he would not get angry. If he was a Yoruba man, he would have finished me. <laughs> the second set of messengers are his witnesses, which we all are. If you ever experience Jesus' salvation, if he ever touch and transform your life, if you ever experience his power in the Holy Spirit, you owe him a debt to talk about it. You know, in the Bible days, Jesus will heal somebody and say, don't talk about it. Did you, did you find that in the Bible? Many times. Don't talk about it. Did they obey? It's not possible to be touched by Jesus and keep quiet. So if you are not evangelizing and witnessing, don't tell me because you are shy. You met a Chinese Jesus. Go and get the real one. 
It's not possible to be taught and transformed by Jesus. And you won't talk about it. I remember the night I gave my life to Christ. I didn't know anything. The message that brought me to Christ was John 10, 10. The thief come to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus said that I may do what? Have life and have you what? More abundantly. And the man, who, young man who preached was a student like me. But he preached so well, he painted a picture of hell. It knocked me off my feet. I didn't believe in God. I wasn't joking. But I said, if, if hell really exists, you must be stupid to want to go there. I said, God, I don't believe in you, but that hell, I don't want to go there. And then the man preached from the pulpit. So if you don't want to go to where I save Jesus Christ as your Lord. I said, ah. so to avoid hell, I had to deal with Jesus. That's why I opened my heart to Jesus. I didn't know what would happen. All I knew was that if you pray this prayer, mean it with all your heart. I had pretended in Bristol to receive Jesus to get out of trouble. In Bristol, the easy way to get out of trouble, I was a child of the devil, but yesterday God found me. So it's okay, go, go and see no more. That's how I got out of trouble. But that night, he said, believe it, mean it. And I meant it. And brethren, I can't say stars fell or rain fell on me, but a weight was lifted off me. Two things happened. A weight of guilt left me. And suddenly the fear of death that dominated my life. Suddenly like death, you cannot come. I just had a 15 minutes follow up. My best friend, some of you know him, Peter Amir Deji. That was the night I met him. He was the one that they asked me to go and meet. I asked me, do you have a gay friend? I wasn't sure whether to say yes or no. Because I had zero in on the gay, but we are not struck a deal. I said, no, you cannot. Have. Do you have a Bible? No, he gave me a New Testament Gideon's Bible. Do you? So, that's all he told me. So, go and pray. We'll see tomorrow. I stepped out of that place. As I was going to my room, I saw one boy and one girl holding hands as if they want to kiss. I went and my friend, don't you know that the devil wants to steal to kill and destroy you? What are you doing with your life? Huh? I saw one guy trying to smoke a cigarette. I smacked the cigarette. My friend, your own hell has even started before you got there. It was crude. It was raw. But it came spontaneously. I don't know how you can meet Jesus and keep quiet. If you met Buhari, you take a selfie. Put on Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook. Everything. You met a if you met uh, um, Lionel Messi, the whole world will know that night that you met Lionel Messi. But you met Jesus for three years. Nobody knows. It's a Chinese version. Go back for the original. First John, that which we have seen, had, touched, experienced. That's what we are talking about. You can't experience, see, Touch Jesus and not talk about him. His disciples. But there are those who follow him. He calls them to a personal work with him. And calls them apostles. And sends them out. Those are ones you can say are full time. Special call. But even if you are just a witness. You are a messenger. You know. But in all this. Two groups of people are excused from being his messengers. How many groups? Two groups. The only people excused from being messengers of Jesus are two. If you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you are excused. He said, tarry in Jerusalem until what? Tarry in Jerusalem until... So, if you are in Jerusalem, you only have one business, look for the Holy Spirit. The moment he comes, you'll be on your feet. Anytime I go to a church or I pass by a church and thousands of people sit down every Sunday, I know that the Holy Spirit has not touched that church. If you drive out now and see cars queuing up at a filling station, what is the excuse? What will you conclude? No fuel. Fuel shortage. 
Because the filling station is not a place to park a car and sleep. It's a place to take fuel and go on your journey. The church is like that. So anytime you see thousands sitting down in a church, day in, day out, what is the conclusion? Power shortage. How that God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and power and he sat down doing worship. What did he do? You can't be filled with the Holy Spirit and sit down. The day Peter got filled and Peter standing up began to speak. Friends, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are excused. But this morning, you can receive the Holy Spirit. He is not a long service award if you serve God for long. He is not even a reward for holiness. He is a gift from a loving father to children who ask. The which of you who have children, they ask for this, you give them that, ask for this, you give them that. How much more will your heavenly father give what? To those who ask. So begin to ask, even as I talk. I may not even pray for you. He will meet you where you are. How do you know he has come? You will receive what? Power. What is power? Boldness. Knowledge. Unity. Wisdom. Ability to lay hand on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. The second group of people excused are those who are not disciples. When Jesus gave the great commission, it was on the day he appointed 11 disciples. He didn't give the great commission on the day he fed 5,000 multitudes. Multitude would have gone at his messenger. But he said in Matthew 28, 16, the 11 disciples went to a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. He awaited for Peter to backslide, Judas to backslide first. So 11. When they saw him, they worshipped him. Disciples are worshippers of Jesus. Amen. There are people who see Jesus in their lives. Who see Jesus in their circumstances. And who worship Jesus. For God is seeking first. Not those to go and do a work for him. But those who will first worship him. How? In spirit and in truth. Worshippers. And then people he gives authority to. All authority in heaven and earth has been what? Given. A messenger without authority is a fraud. How many people have gone around in the name of governor, duping people, or in the name of ministers and president, duping people? It's to call name dropping or advance fee fraud or 419. The sons of Sceva went out like that without authority. What did the devil do to them? By the time he finished with them, they had to go and find their father. They didn't call them the sons of God. The sons of who? Some of you are sons of one church. Sons of Dunami. Sons of Redeem. Sons of Equa. Sons of NKC. <laughs> Transform yourself to be a son of God before you go out. If not, the devil will show you. There is no authority in the name of a church. There is authority in the name of who? Jesus. So why the urgency? We've seen the king, the message, the messenger. Why the urgency? We're talking about urgency. And I'm getting to a place we will start winding down. But just follow me. God desires all men saved. Hallelujah. How many people are in the world today? Eh? Eh? What is something? As of this morning, you can Google it on your phone. It's not difficult. The world population is 7.812 billion. Last year it was 7.3. 5.3, sorry. So the world population. So how many people does God want saved? 
7.812 billion. You know why Coca-Cola is the best brand in the whole world? Coca-Cola has an ambition to put a bottle of Coke in the hand of 7.812 billion people in the world. So they do their survey, they do their research, they set up bottling company. This Coca-Cola is the largest spending company on advertising. Just if you want to get sponsorship for LDG, go and ask Coca-Cola. Ask them to come and put their kiosk and their banner. You have sponsorship, but we are not looking for it. Even if you are burying your father, you don't have money, go and ask Coca-Cola, please. My father is being buried in my village. Can you come and set up a kiosk, put up your banner? You have free drinks. Have I given you a secret? They are willing to go everywhere and do anything for Coca-Cola to be known. Oh, I wish Christians were like that. The Bible said the reason why Jesus hasn't come is not because you haven't married. He is not slow, but he's he's being patient, not willing that any should do what? Perish. The reason why we need to be urgent is that the time is gone. Jesus, our theme scripture said, night comes when no man can work. And night comes for people in two ways. It's either Jesus comes and meets you or you go and meet him. Even if you a, a master and a professor of eschatology and you know when Jesus will come, the exact second, you know when you will go. So it doesn't help you. The best thing is be prepared. Hallelujah. I mean, yesterday I just got news of a very lovely brother I know, Justice Tom Yakubo. He went to a program like this in Ayingba. It was a fasting program. By the third day he slept, he didn't wake up. I read the story of another pastor I know who is in the UK, went on Christmas vacation to Spain. On the 23rd, they got to Spain. On the 24th, they went out to swim. There are 13 swimming pools in that resort. They went to the one that they thought was safe, that doesn't need bodyguards. The boy jumped in, couldn't come out. The sister jumped in, couldn't come out. The man jumped in to help his two children, couldn't come out. Three of them died on the 24th of December. How could they have imagined that they would die? Be ready. And it's not just for you. That unbeliever you are postponing giving the message to, you will not see him again. Some of them are your fathers and mothers. One of my biggest pain in life, when I got saved, I got to hear that my mom was sick. And they, ah, I've not preached to her. We're about to write exams. So, okay, when I finish the exam, I'll travel home. But then something said, don't wait. So I wrote a letter to her explaining the gospel. I think that is the longest letter I ever wrote in chief language. I master all the help heaven could give me to write it. I sent that letter home. My sister was there to read to her. But when she heard that my letter came, she had not stood up for months. She stood up. They read the letter to her, and she was crying. Then she wanted to say something, and she died. So what did she want to say? God, did she accept? Did she agree? God, what happened? I wish I can be sure where my mom is. But at least I was satisfied that I did my part. So I made sure that my own father would not go through the same situation. So I harassed him with the gospel until he gave up. And he died a believer. Praise the Lord. It took 17 years. 17 years. But he finally gave him. When he was about to die, he said, look, don't keep me in the fridge for more than three days. And the only thing you must do on my night on my way keeping is to preach. 
So those of you who came for my father's burial, it was Uncle Cho that preached. Over 50 people gave their lives to Christ. So he may not have witnessed in life, but his death brought 50 people. Some I'm still falling up to today. Praise the Lord. So, this. The harvest is ripe. Jeremiah 8.20 The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. Is there no balm in Gilead? Every day on the Mediterranean between Morocco, Djibouti and Spain and France hundreds of Africans including Nigerians are dying on the sea looking for a better life in Europe. And yet Christ in them is their hope of what? There are still other sheep outside the fold. They must come in. That's why there's the urgency. And Jesus is waiting to return when this gospel is preached. I want to quickly round up by challenging us on. Now, how far has the gospel gone? We've seen the king, the message, the messenger, and why we need to be urgent. How far have we gone with this job? There are 7.8 billion people in the world as of 2019. And this is how they are divided. You see, 6.9% are Buddhist. Well, let me not bother you a percentage. You see that red part? Can you see the red part? That is a, imagine that this circle is a cake, wedding cake, or pizza. That red piece is the only piece that God has. But even that red piece, you can divide it into two. One half will be Catholics, Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, spiritual tuberculosis, you know tuberculosis, TB. Man. You know TB. You know Joshua, the son of Nun. And the man in the synagogue, not the God, is a spiritual tuberculosis. I'm sorry if some of you are his devotees, but there's a problem. Half of that you will see later. There are about 2.26 billion Christians in the world. Only about 1 billion are evangelicals or born again. Which means 1.26 billion believe in something else. They are the lost sheep in Israel that Jesus called them. The blue one here is Islam. 16, there are that light blue are people who don't believe in anything. They say they are not religious. They are atheists. The pink one, Hindu. The other one, brown, Buddhism. The other one, African traditional religion, the folk religions. So if then you have Jews and others. So imagine that in this whole world, just 31% are Christian. It means 3 out of 10 any type of Christian. When you see churches on every street in my body, you think Christianity is a majority religion. I walk through North Bank, a lot of North Bank, and I was interested in those core house quarters to see whether there was a church. How many of you attend church? Let me see your hand. You attend church, any church. How many of you have one full and your house am in your church? You see, we have allowed politics to blind us to the harvest. We don't see them as a right feed. We see them as enemies to vanquish. But when Jesus said, go into all of Makodi and preach the gospel as a witness to every nation. He means Edomas, Egalas, Etulos, Hausa, Fulani, Jukuns, and any tribe you find in Makodi, it's a nation. Hallelujah! Nation does not mean country, it means tribe. When Jesus gave that commission, was they Nigeria, Ghana, Morocco? So nation doesn't mean country. Nation means tribe, ethnic group. 
And the gospel is not just to be a broadcast in stadiums. It is also supposed to be a narrow cast on nations. May the Lord give us understanding. So when God looks at the church in Makodi, he is also checking. Is there any fool and man? Is there any house man? And not all of them here are settlers. Some of them have been here for hundreds of years. Why do you call the capital of Benue? Why is the meaning of Makodi in Tib? The man who founded this town was called Alaji Iti Mekudi. The Uibo man couldn't call Mekudi. What did he call? Makarde. Makarde. What is Makarde? Katsina was founded by a man from Katsina. Alaji Iti Katsina. Alaji Mamo Yoro Katsina. The grandchildren are still my friend. Great grandchildren. When the team man will want to visit him, they say, Where are you going? I'm going to see Katsina. Which Katsina? The one that's always saying Allah, Allah. They be here. Yes, they might be fighting us physically. And it's not correct. I'm not joining you to say it's correct. But it doesn't stop us that we owe them the gospel. God will not say because they are killing you, avoid them. He would rather say, Lord, forgive them for they know not what. And in any case, can I say to you, where do you have troubles in the world today? Name the places. Where is ISIS from? ISIS, where is it from? Al-Qaeda, where is it from? Middle East. ISIS, Middle East. Al-Shaba, where is it from? Somalia, you don't know geography. Boko Haram, where is it from? North East. It's a Kanuri phenomenon. The Kanuri thing. Naja Delta Militant. Where are they from? The Creeks. What is the common thing that ties these places together? Places without the gospel. These are places that don't have the gospel. There are over 5 mi- million Kanuris in Nigeria. You can't count 100 that are Christians. There are over 10 million Fulanis in Nigeria. We are still looking for 5,000 who are Christians. Not to talk of Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran. Somalia is 99.999% Muslim. And I always tell churches in the South, they are the, they are the ones to blame. When revival broke in the South and they knew how to cast out demons, they sent them to Sahara Desert. Is that not why they were sending demons? Who is in the Sahara? Kanuris and Fulani. So we infected them with demons. May we cast them out in Jesus' name. We in the north, when we cast out demons, we send them to the riverine area. They became Niger Delta militant. We also need to cast those demons out in Jesus' name. Instead of sending missionaries, what will we send them? There are 2.3 Christian billions in the world. 1.8 billion Muslims. And the sad thing is that there is only one witness for every 308,000 Muslims. For every 308,000 Muslims, there is only one person trying to reach them. They have the least allocation of missionaries and Christian workers. I'm praying that one of these days, God will Push Adegoye to the Middle East. Push Mountain of Fire there. Push Oyedeko with his living faith. Let them go and demonstrate it there. It's easy to demonstrate it among Christians. But we are not sending our generals. We are sending our recruits. It's not because Muslims are difficult to reach that they are not coming to faith. It's because we are not tried enough. Some of us, because of the crisis in Nigeria polity, we haven't stopped praying for them. We are praying against them. May God raise in our midst not Nigerian Christians, but Christian Nigerians. Why is the difference? Nigerian Christians have Nigeria first, Christianity second. 
Christian Nigerian have what first? Nigerians. May you not be a chief Christian. Be a Christian chief. Don't be a Hausa Christian. What must you be? Don't be an Igbo Christian. What must you be? Don't be a Yoruba Christian. What must you be? Christian first, every other thing second. That will solve the problem we have. But when we are our tribe first, Christianity second, the Christianity get colored by our tribes. There are 1.8 billion, 0.8 billion Hindus and about 500 million Buddhists. And for every 186,000 Buddhists and Hindus, there's only one messenger. How can he do it? So when Jesus said the harvest is plenty, the laborers are few, he meant it. I'm bringing back the facts so you can know that it's true. There are about 500 million atheists. There used to be 900 million by 2010, which means God is breaking through among the atheists. In nine years, they have shrunk by almost half. Africa has a population of 1.32 billion. Christians are said to be 45%, Islam 40%, others 14.1%. So you look at the north, where the Greek circle is, that is where Islam dominates. You look at the down south, where the red is, that's where the blood of Jesus has washed. You look at the yellow, that's where Islam and Christianity and traditional religion are fighting for dominance. So, Islam came through the north. Christianity came through the south. They are pushing up. Islam is pushing down. That's why the middle belt has become a battleground. It's not just a political thing. It's a spiritual thing. And all across Africa, look at where we have problems across Africa. It's that middle belt. But if you just see it in terms of politics, you miss the point. The other thing that bothers me is the Christian part is the one that has HIV AIDS most. So what is the relationship between HIV and Christianity? Benue, Middle Bed, Nigeria, the Christian Nigeria that we are crying for has the highest rate of HIV, which means immorality is right, promiscuity is right in the Christian part. May God deliver us from that kind of Christianity. Drug addiction is becoming highest in the middle belt. The reason why cheap boys don't have energy to fight Fulani is not because they don't have guns. They don't have energy. Tamado has finished them. May God deliver us. So, this part of the world, the area between latitude 10 and 40 north of the equator is called 1040 window. That is where 95% of people who are yet to hear the gospel in the world lie. So if we are going to be urgent with this message, this is where we should be headed to. This other one doesn't mean they are all Christian, but they have enough churches around them to spread the gospel. But in this place, most people have not had. And that's where we should be rushing to the gospel. My boy had a broken arm and I took him to the hospital. And when you go to that hospital in, in, in Pretoria, they will give you Either a yellow card, a green card, or a red card. If they give you green, your case can wait. It's not critical. You can even wait for five days. If they give you yellow, it's simple but not death threatening. If they give you red, you go to emergency ward. So you go according to your card. So these people have a red card. May we rush there in Jesus' name. Let me broaden that map. This is where it looks like. It starts, it stretches from northern Nigeria. You can see northern Nigeria is in that square. West Africa, North Africa, Middle East, Asia. That is where Islam, the green is Islam majority. That is Hindu. Orange is Hindu majority. Red is Buddhist and other religions. Now, this is where 95% of people who are here to get the message dwell. 
So if you were God, why were you rush messengers? Eh? But this is where the least number of missionaries were. Less than 10% of missionaries work in this place where the highest need is. Because of fear, we saw yesterday. Our motto is, I shall not die, but live. What is wrong with dying? Whether you confess it or you don't confess it, it's appointed unto man. How many times to die? You will die. I will attend your funeral. You will attend my funeral. One of these days. So wisdom is be prepared. Especially if you are the man. You are supposed to die before your wife. The Bible says God is a father to the... Did he say he's a mother to the mother? He's a husband to the... Did he say he's a wife to a widower? How many times do you read about widowers in the Bible? You know, widows, widows, widows. May God give you understanding. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm trying to close now. So we can pray. I'm not really preaching. I'm just sharing facts to which we must respond. Since 2019 years ago, Jesus commanded us to go into all the world and make what? So why are billions still unsaved and unreached? Why? See, there are about 17,300 nations, people group. That means Chief, Edo, Maigede, Hausa, Ibo, Yoruba, Kanuri, Fulani. That's why the Bible called nation. How many of them are in the world? How many? We need to know because if the Bible says go into all the nations, you should know how many nations are there so we can count the ones we have gone, the ones we have not gone. If I say take this 10,000 and I buy bread for my children, give each one of them two loaves. What is the first question you will ask me? How many children are there? Out of that, 7,300 are unreached at different levels of unrichness. So we know the ones that are not yet received the message. But you know what? For every one of this unreached people group, there are how many believers? 700 and what? 80,000. Can you see? For every one unreached people group, how many believers do we have? I'm talking about born again, spirit free, heaven going, I hope see, hate you. So if we believe in tithes, what is 10% of 780,000? Eh? So if the church is just to pay tithe of 10%, every unrich people group will have 78,000 missionaries. Even if they are not anointed, something will happen. Imagine that we don't even want to give God 10%, just 1%. How many missionaries will we have? 7,800. Why should Jesus be said the laborers are few? For every of these unreached people group, there are about 900 local churches. How many local churches? So if every local church just decides to send one missionary, one, every unreached tribe will have how many missionaries? But I can tell you, there are some tribes in Nigeria that today, they don't have one missionary. Because the church is not sending. We want to build mega churches with mega problems and minor visions. A mega church with a micro vision. We are committing the sin of the sons of Adam, our sons of Noah. Let us gather ourselves into a city so that we will not be scattered. When God says scatter. So, the truth is, if the church was serious about this plan, we will finish it. We are not. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Maybe we don't have money. Look at the facts. You can Google Pew Research or 
Joshua Project, WW Joshua Project, or Pew Research. You get more information. Christians in the world, those who call themselves Christian, I put it in quotes because that means any and everything. They own 55% of the wealth of the world. Those who call themselves Christian, what percentage of Muslim own? What are Hindus? What are Jews? The Jews that you think are very rich, they only control 1.1% of the wealth of the world. How much do Christians control? Now, there are 13.1 million millionaires in the world as of today. How many of them call themselves Christians? 7.4 million. Over half of the world's millionaires call themselves what? Eh? How many of them are Muslims? 6.5. So we can't say we don't have money. But like we had last night, they are willing to spend their money to Islamite. We are willing to spend our own money to eat. So money cannot be the problem. Now, let me summarize it for you. Globally, for every 10 people who are not believers, whether they are Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, how many believers are there? Eh? One. For every 10 people in the world who call themselves Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, atheist, whatever religion, how many born again people do we have? One. In Africa, it is one to eight. In Nigeria, it is one to seven. Now, is it possible to preach the gospel to seven people in one year? Eh? I didn't say convert them. Preach. Remember, we are not called to convert. We are called to share. Conversion is the work of the Holy Spirit. Is it possible to preach the gospel to seven people in a year? Imagine you are a thief man and one of those is full and in. Is it possible to learn John 3.16 full and in two months? Is it possible? Or you want to preach to a Chinese person. All you need is John 3.16. Can you learn John 3.16 in Chinese in three months? Imagine Boy told you, I will make you ambassador to China if you can learn John 3.16 in Chinese in three months. How many of you will do it? One week, some of us will do it. Remember those who brought the gospel to Tibland. They were not Tibland. They came here and learned language. Translated the Bible into it. Because they wanted you to hear the gospel. You can't go do it for another person. You only learn how when you are looking for a job in Abuja. So if we really wanted to do this job, it can be finished in one year. But many of us, for the last five years, you not miss one MLR, you don't miss one LDG and you are not rich one soul. Shame to you. So what is all this dying to serve and reaching the nations about? You just put a CV that I go to Capro, I go to Peace House. How does where you go become a CV? Hallelujah. So what are the challenges as I close? The first challenge that there are demonic conspiracies. Amen? We heard about that yesterday. First, the devil made sure that Jesus would not be born. Revelation 12. He tried everything to kill the woman. God rescue her. Second, we saw in Matthew 4. He tried to make Jesus derail the call. He didn't succeed. He tried to make sure that Jesus must not die. Remember Peter wanted to rescue him. Then Jesus died. Then he must not rose Christ. He put a big stone. God overcame that. When he finally rose up, he changed the gospel. Say he didn't rise. His body was stolen. At every stage. Then finally, in Psalm 2, he divided the church asunder so that we won't be together. The lack of vision. Jesus said, 
Lift up your eyes and behold the fields. They are right. Two things there. Eyes lifted up. Everybody lift up your eyes. When you lift up your eyes, what do you see? Ahead of you. When you put down your eye, what do you see? Your feet. Too many of us walk this rate with eyes on ourselves. When we are trying to learn how to pray, why are we learning how to pray? So that we can get things from God. When you want to overcome the devil, why do you overcome the devil? So that ancestral causes will not harm me. Our prayers are about me. Yet Jesus taught us to pray, Thy kingdom come, that we be done. Prayers are about him, not us. May the Lord give us understanding. And you can't pray beyond the vision you have and the burden you have. And then there are unwilling laborers. Romans 10 says, how can they preach without, how can they hear without what? Preaching. Isaiah 6, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Proverbs 10, 5 says, a child that sleeps during harvest is a shame to the father. And we are sleeping. And then finally, there is a Moses in all of us as I round up with Exodus. We make excuses instead of real reasons. There's a difference between a reason and an excuse. Hallelujah. The Bible speaks of a man who will say there's a lion on the way. That's why I'm not going. How do you know? Moses, as I round up now, please. In Exodus 3 was called of God. We know the story. And the Moses response challenged me. As I prayed about this conference, it challenged me. I thought about my own life. How that we make excuses when it comes to the call of God. God had a problem. His people were locked up in bondage in Egypt. Like the 1.8 billion Muslims, the 1.08 billion Hindus, the over five, the almost 500 Hindus, I mean Buddhists, the atheists. All those are locked by pharaohs. And God is looking for Moses to go. And that's why he comes to us in this conference. And say, I have a message that will deliver these people. But it requires urgency. And when God called Moses, chapter 3 verse 11. Look at what Moses says. Says in verse 11. But Moses said, God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children out? Who am I? Brethren, the issue is not am I. The issue is I am. May the Lord give you understanding. It's not about am I. It's about I am. Just reverse that. It's about God and his ability. When God sends you, he doesn't look at you. He looked at what he can do. When Buhari appointed minister of education and said he wanted to build university, was he expecting the minister to bring money from his pocket? Where was the money going to come from? The budget of the country. So when God to go for me, where is he going to find the resources? From his wealth and riches in Christ Jesus. And God told Moses, it's not about you. I will be with you. Hallelujah. The biggest thing you need to be a messenger of God is his abiding presence. After Jesus gave the great commission, Lo, I will be with you, even unto the end. How many of you know God? How many of us here know God? Even if it's 2%. How big is your God? How big? I know. Big, 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 big. Big, big, light, 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 light. In the church, by your heart. Small, small, small. Weak, weak, weak. We sing what we don't believe. Christians don't tell lies. They just go to church and sing the lies. You are God, oh, you are not a man. Oh. You are big, big, big. Then this big God say, go. Say, but the devil will eat me up. And this God is with you. He made the heavens and the earth. So if money finishes, can't he make money? He has a meat. If food finishes, 
Can he make food? Even if there's no woman or man to marry, the same God that made Eve can make another woman. So, what? Who am I? And many of us don't ever in our eyes amount to anything. Because each time you go to church and conference, it emphasizes the sin, not the redemption. It emphasizes the fact that if you are still lying, it means the flesh is controlling you. So you ever see yourself as a liar. Please listen to me. A Christian can sin, but a Christian is not a sinner. May God give you revelation. If you focus on your weakness, you will never grow. Why don't you grow as you go? I became a missionary. I was barely three or four years as a Christian. What did I know? I didn't know doctrine. I knew basic Bible study from FCS. But I have grown as I go. You will never looking at yourself be big enough to do anything for God. But God is not looking for your CV. He's looking for your availability. The next thing, I don't know God enough. Because if they ask me, who sent me? What do I say? I don't have the kind of revelation other men of God have. God says, I'm not looking for your education. I'm looking for your revelation of me. Amen? What did God say? For every excuse, God is bunk. He says, then Moses says, if I come to the people and say to them, the God of your father has sent me, and they ask me, what is his name? What should I say to them? Is it not the same reason why many of us have not gone out? You don't think you know Bible enough? You don't know God enough? Can I say to you, the little you know will make you a bishop in some countries. When Nigerians are traveling abroad and they don't want to come back, they carry a Bible and a collar. Anywhere they get stranded, they start church. Because just hang around church, you know so much of God. There's so much of revelation in Nigeria that we take for granted. Because I'm not like Bile Akoni or Adekoye. I can't go and do anything. How many Bile Akonis are in the world? The little you have is much. Hallelujah. In the land of the blind, the one eye is king. Is that not what they say? The people will not believe. You know, these Muslims are hard, these Hindus, they won't believe. That's not your business. You are not called to compare them to believe. Then Moses said, verse 1, chapter 4, but they will not believe or listen. The Lord said, what is in your hand? A staff. Throw it on the ground. It became a snake. Put your hand beside it. It became snow as. Now, it is God that compares the people to believe. Hallelujah. He gives you authority. As they went, the Lord went with them, confirming his word by what? Sign. God is the one that gives confirmation. Not you. If I write a check for you to carry to the bank, is it you that will confirm the check? Who will confirm the check? Excuse me, who confirms the check? I've told this story over and over. I'll say it again. There's a sister that when she was in school, they won't even ask her to pray for food. Nobody believed gems will die. You know that kind of sister? That not even the gems on food can die. She was a weakling. She finished school, got a job with foreign affairs. They sent her to Angola. Her job was to go around Angola and take census of Nigerians there. One day, she got to this place and couldn't get back home. So she had to, they canceled the flight. So she couldn't fly back. Sunday met her in a village. She wanted to go to church, no church. So she was like, ah, God, no church here, you know, let me just sleep. God said, if there's no church, go and get to church, go and witness. That's the first time she says she, says she had God. By her own admission. She stepped out on a... What's going on? If you so men, she'll be afraid. She don't saw one woman trying to cook. One old woman. She picked a soft target. She got to the woman and started telling the woman in the little Portuguese she knew. 
that I, I want to tell you about Jesus. The woman, who is this Jesus? Say he's the Savior, he died for the woman. What can he do for me? He can save you, he can heal you, he can provide for you. Say, did you say heal me? Wait. The woman got inside, brought her 11 year old son that was blind. Say, I, I don't have problem. Is this my son? If Jesus can heal him, I will follow him. If he's in Nigeria, you carry him to Holy Ghost service, isn't it? Or carry him to one deliverance man of God. But here she was. She started shuffling. Jesus, I opened my mouth too wide. You see now. This, what do I do now? She has, she has never prayed for headache. But she has opened her mouth. So she said, okay, okay, okay. Let's pray. And Jesus, you know when you're on earth, you hear the sick. I know you are here with me. Please. I've opened my mouth too wide. She prayed in English. or not in Portuguese. So the woman here. So the woman will hear what she was saying. She said, don't disgrace me. Don't disgrace, <laughs> don't disgrace your name. While she was yet praying, the woman screamed. The boy's eyes opened. The crowd gathered. The men she was avoiding. Everybody gathered. What is it? The boy, my boy can see. What happened? This woman came to pray for her. Said the other woman, what did you do? What did you do? I did not know. I just told her about Jesus, that Jesus can heal, Jesus can save. Oh, me too, I want Jesus. Me too, I want Jesus. Me. That's why a whole village came to faith. Because of one woman who in school cannot pray for food. A Christian is like a spaceship. You don't know how strong you are until you lift up. The little you have. See all this China we talk about? Go to China. They don't even know Trinity. They know nothing. The Lord will help us. I don't have charisma. That's what he said. God said to him, Oh my Lord, I'm not eloquent. Since then, before, before you called me, I didn't have anointing. After you called me, I still can't see anointing. God said, who made them out? But you see, the real reason was invested. When God has answered him, he said, But Lord, oh my Lord, please send someone else. Then God got angry. If you didn't want to go, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> why were you raising all those reasons? The truth is, we don't want to go. And God gets angry at that. A man had two sons. He called them, go and work for me. I'm not going, I'm not going. The father had no problem. The other one said, I'm going. I never went. If you don't want to go, just tell God, Lord, me, my deal with you is that bless me, preserve me, protect me, but don't send me anywhere. You hear? God will say, yes, my son. On the last day, he will give you the boy's court at his day, where people who are protected, not sent, labor and language between heaven and hell. At least the heat in hell will be touching you small. Right? <laughs> the real challenge, brethren, shall we stand up? Let's stand up now. I want to finish. The real issue is that we are rebellious children. Like I talk about that child. My son, go. I'm not going. And we are complacent. Worry about Islam agenda. We have forgotten about our evangelization agenda. Why do you get distracted by what the Muslims are doing? Why not face your own? You are like a student in an exam. You are worried about what your fellow student is writing wrong. How do you know? Face your own exam. Allow God. And may I say to you, whenever a Christian is persecuted, it is Jesus that is being persecuted. When he met Saul, he said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute? Did Paul touch Jesus? Did he ever touch Jesus? But we are his body. And the way I hear some of us talk on WhatsApp, as if God has become so weak, he cannot defend his own. The enemy within, nominalism, syncretism, we have turned Christianity to idol worship, idolatry. We brought traditional practices. When our fathers go to the shrine, they carry how many things? Two things. What do they carry to the shrine? 
a sacrifice and a prayer. You remember? When we go to church, what do we carry? An offering and prayer. So what's the difference? They want to use the offering to bribe God to do what they want. We try to use our tithe and offering to bribe God to do what we want. So we're not giving God because we love him. I want to pay my tithe so that he will rebuke the devourer. Who gave you what you are using to pay tithe in the first place? Finally, we have combat soldiers. Who are not engaged. And I hear I'm addressing those of us who say we are missionaries, we are pastors, we are full time. Remember in 1 Samuel 17, when, when David got to the battlefront, the Bible says every day Goliath will come and challenge them. Israeli soldier will roll. Oh, hey, 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 hey. And they will go and sit down. Nobody confronted Goliath. The next morning they'll come up. We are soldiers marching us to war in the name of Jesus. We shall conquer. Nobody will go to Goliath. They will go and sit down. So they observe this thing. They, is there nobody to confront this person? So what do we do? We just shout and sing in churches. Worship has overtaken missions. We spend money to invite big time worshippers from Lagos, Sinachi. John Godfrey, what we know the names of the worship leader. I'm not saying it's wrong, but a church that survives on worship and has forgotten warfare will die. Heaven is not a Grammy Award for singing. How many of you love soccer? I am a Liverpool fan from for life. Not only today. My wife will tell you since I was born. I love Liverpool. Before they became anything. <laughs> but have you ever heard where FIFA gave a best fan award? They give the best player and the best coach. I've never seen FIFA give the best fan. So if you are just a fan in the body of Christ, there's no award for you. You are either a player or you are coaching others to play. Hallelujah. It is only those two that will get an award. But soldiers that are shouting as if the war is happening. And nothing is happening. I was reading The Economist. One of these magazines. And they say something. Before. In the workplace they had a problem. Absenteeism. What is the meaning of absenteeism? People dodge work. Today, they have another problem. Presentism. They are there, but they are doing nothing. They report to work so they won't lose salary. But while they are on that desk, a father should have moved to the director of bed three years ago. is still lying somewhere. It is called presentism. May you as a missionary, pastor, evangelist, not just be present. May you be active. Those soldiers were present. They were in the battle, dressed, shouting as if something was happening. He took a David, a rookie, to come, a short-term mission volunteer who went on Operation Joshua. He was not even a soldier. He just went to see his brothers and encourage them. He took him to kill Goliath. Because where there is no engagement, there is no victory. What are you engaged in? Shall we pray? Listen, before you pray, the right response is at once. Amen? Immediately. But all those who say, let me first, never go anywhere. The Great Commission is not an option to be considered. It is a command to be obeyed. That's what Hudson Taylor said. The Great Commission is not the great suggestion. It is a command. The Great Commission will not be fulfilled with our spare time or spare money. It has to take full engagement. So if you think God is calling you to go, go fully. If you think God is calling you to support, put all your money there. It's not a loose change thing. And then finally, John Piper said, there are only three kinds of Christians when it comes to world evangelization. Zealous goers, zealous senders, or the disobedient. 
So you are either going, sending, or disobeying. So which one will you be this morning as we pray? Which one will you be? Let's pray.